Well, thank you very much, Minister Ferrell, um, and all for the other p politicians who have been here and helpful to us. And I think it's kind of interesting that there does seem to be a kind of change of spirit. Um, some of the initiatives that Minister Verrill um, outlined, I think, have been a long time in coming, but we are so grateful that there seems to have been a shift in, um, in, the, in the recognition of um, what the, the level of support that our older people need. Um, and I think it's interesting that it was mentioned about um, the history of age concerns, starting off in Dunedin, I have to say, so I'm very proud of that, and our local group in Dunedin are extremely proud of that. Um, 1948, um, it was pretty good going, I think. Um, but the things that they were worried about then, food, shelter, health, um, were still struggling with. Um, and I think, I think you know, somebody once famously said, you can judge the quality of a society by how well it treats its most vulnerable people. Well, we're kind of getting there, I guess. Um, we're on our way. Um, but anyway, um, um, it's nice to meet you all. My name is Robert Aitken, and I've been fortunate to work with Natasha uh, and Karen um, and the rest of the board on trying to think about what we want to do as a board, um, as an organization um, going to the future. And one of the first things we have to do is, well, what are we doing at the moment? And what we're doing at the moment is reflected in how we look. And how we look is determined by the brand we've got. And so we thought, well, what we need to do is we need to think about the brand. So that was the kind of starting point for the presentation today, which I will uh, now commence, I believe. Okay. Um, so we were doing pretty well. We, we're doing, we've been doing very well, extremely well um, as an organization. Um, despite the lack of funding, um, we are still managing to punch above our weight, which seems to be pretty typical of New Zealand generally. Um, and I think up and down the country, we have 35 organizations who in their own way, um, with their particular kind of local cultures and local needs, are doing extremely well in providing as much service as we possibly can. However, we think that you know, it's time, well, we don't, it's not just us thinking this, we've uh, over the last period of time, maybe the last five, six years, pretty much every time at an AGM, we've had the question of, well, age concern seems a bit old fashioned. It seems just about people who are needy at the bottom of the pile. And of course, you know, they're always the people who, we, who get most of our attention. But isn't it time to kind of rethink what we do as an organization? Um, and so we've, as a board um, and a, as an organization, we've done a lot of internal thinking. And I think quite often when you think about a brand, you just think about that bit of the front, the bit you see, the bit behind the, 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 the wrapping here. Um, but actually, the most important bit of branding or rethinking your branding isn't what you come up with in terms of a, a symbol or a logo or an image or a picture. What's the most important thing about it is what it makes you think of internally to get to that point. So we have had to kind of go right back to where we started and what we've done and what we want to do and where we're going in the future with a changing spirit, a changing organization or expectations, a changing population, more diverse population. Um, how inclusive are we as an, as an organization? How fit for purpose are we going to the future, which is quite different from what we've all been kind of used to? And so as a board and as an organization, we've had to really think, well, what is it we stand for? And I think that's what we're so pleased about with the brand image um, and the new brand positioning that we've come up with. So it's not just what we look like on the outside, <laughs> it's what we believe in on the inside. And I think increasingly the brands that have some kind of DNA, some kind of purpose, some kind of values based um, are the ones which we tend to kind of support a bit more and the ones which I think are a bit more long lasting. So we've had to do an awful lot of work um, on the inside to come up with a belief in reinforcing what it is we stand for. And I'm, we, we hope that you'll agree that when we reveal the brand, um, you'll agree that it kind of represents what, we're, what we stand for. Um, so um, the things, as, as I said, that started the organization are still important to us. We still need to think about how we, um, we move forward. Um, I should move the slides really, shouldn't I? Having, having the same slide on the same thing doesn't kind of keep your interest very much. Okay, okay so there's a, there's a bit about our history. How we started, how our model, um, which was nicely termed the kind of older people's welfare council, which really is a term from the 50s or the 40s and the 50s. Um, we had to kind of change that as kind of things moved so we, as we moved into the 70s and our model got adapted by Auckland and Canterbury and Wellington. So I'd like to once again say how important Dunedin was to lead the whole country, not just part of it, um, forward. So glad that Auckland and Wellington and Canterbury finally caught up with us um, and trying to stay with us as we go forward. Um, 
And so that model became kind of consolidated in the middle 70s when we became age concern, um, which was probably the most important part of a change for us, where we needed not just this kind of local support, but we needed some kind of national coordination, a national office that could bring all these things together, could lobby for us as one voice. And I think that's been extremely successful. Um, so we're really proud about the, the way the organiz organization has consolidated and represents every corner of this country. When I say every corner, I mean pretty much every corner, not every tiny little bit, because we've got, still got some areas that are not quite covered. But we've got 35 organizations up and down the country that are doing whatever they can in their areas. Okay, so as I said, um, we've been asked several times, why don't we change the name? Well, we did some research. We did some substantial research, as you would in any kind of major change. And what became cl quite clear was that actually most people knew about us. They knew about age concern. They knew what um, age concern stood for. In fact, we were recognized as being one of the top four kind of not-for-profit charities in the country with St. John's and Red Cross and Salvation Army. So if you're up in that kind of league, I mean, that's pretty good. So why would you change the name? Why would you change the name? And so the research made it pretty clear that actually you shouldn't change the name. But what you do need to do is kind of revitalize, rethink, reposition, reconsider what it is you're doing. And can you kind of, can you represent that um, in some kind of um, symbolic, graphic, visual way? Um, and so we went to our stakeholders, we went to all of our age concerns, we went to our stakeholders, we did the whole bottom up, what is it that you think we're in? Um, in the market to do? What do you think is important for us? What's important for you? What's important for us? How can we try and kind of bring those things together to have this kind of one vision? Uh, Minister Vero has already mentioned that you know, we're about equality and respect and dignity and well-being. So we've got that in common, but how can we kind of represent that? Um, and so we took all that information, we synthesized it, we worked with a, an organization called Moxie who have been outstanding on a help to us. Um, and we came up with this particular visual idea. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Robert, just show it what it is. Just get on with it. Okay, I'm get getting there. I'm getting there. Um, oh, we've got our reveal people edging into position. Um, <laughs> so this is probably the first time in your lives you're going to clap a piece of visual art, really. Um, and we do think it's visual art. And we do think it kind of represents um, what it is we stand for. So I think we could, all, we could do, make this interactive, couldn't we? We could do a countdown, couldn't we? So... I know working backwards is probably not very good, um, but anyway, so we'll start off with 10 together. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Can I do one as well? Thank you very much. Okay, so let me just explain this. So we, you will recognize the symbolic cultural representation here of the Huia feathers, and we know that Huia feathers are traditionally a sign of friendship and mana and leadership, um, all areas that we think are important for this, um, for our new position. And so what we think this is important to represent is a different understanding of the organization. One of the things that I think we've been slightly behind the eight ball on is being more inclusive. And I think that's a key thing. If you can't have dignity and respect and equality if you're not inclusive. And so we wanted to have some physical sign that tells us that our promise is to be inclusive. That this is one of the missions that we've got. Um, we like the idea that it's a circular um, shape because it's the circle of life as well. It's that we're all involved. Um, even though we're at the kind of far end of the life continuum, it's a continuous um, cycle. So we are really pleased that we want to keep this idea of the circle of life going. Um, and we think that this should represent, um, we've mentioned the past, we've mentioned the present, but also we've got to think about the future. So this is that internal kind of um, way forward for us. Um, so we are hoping that everybody, when they see this, gets the same sense that... Um, we are moving forward as well. We are moving forward with everyone. We are trying to be as inclusive and diverse and to recognize that aging is not a problem. It's actually something to be welcomed and um, encouraged and supported. 
and that's our fundamental reason for being. Uh, and the last thing is, I've already had three discussions this morning with people, um, with um, people who are not usually working with us, um, but who have promised to work with us. So I think those, the investment in the number of um, croissants was, uh, was well spent. So thank you very much. That's my bit.